How's the Marlins pitching staff looking heading into 2024? There's a state of the staff episode featuring Mel Stoudemire with a little help from Alex Krutschek. This is Locked on Marlins. You are Locked on Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England and welcome to Locked On Marlins. It's your daily Marlins podcast. I'm your host, Peter Pratt. Hit me up, of course, at Miami Marlins underscore UK. Happy Monday, guys. Firstly, happy Monday to everyone. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Uh, thanks for making Locked On Marlins your first listen of the day. This is your team every day, of course, as we are trending towards the end of February. Boy, oh boy. Like, we're almost like a month out from opening day. Feels like it's in touching distance right now. This week, the Marlins are going to play baseball. Yes, sir. The Marlins are going to play some baseball this week uh, over the weekend. So we're going to be fully gearing up for that all week with coverage here on Locked On Marlins. Don't forget to hit subscribe over on YouTube as well. Uh, the YouTube channel, uh, well, well-named Locked On Marlins. Make sure you hit it up over there. This episode is brought to you by our good friends over at FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers. Join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Guys, today we are talking pitching. State of the staff is how I've uh, decided to uh, title this episode. This is inspired and brought to you effectively by Alex Krutschuk from Fish on First. Had a, a great article. Great article uh, that he put out there. There was no video accompaniment. I haven't seen any of the videos, but effectively Alex uh, uh, writing a full article of his time spent speaking with Mel Stoudemire. And there was a lot of interesting topics in there that, that I've been thinking about too. So great to hear from Mel. Pretty candid, I would say, with, with his responses as he is. Um, he doesn't seem to BS anyone, Mel Stoudemire, which is kind of what I like. I like that from Mel. And when we look at the Marlins' pitching options, there's obviously the situation with Sandy Alcantara, clearly. But even with Sandy missing, looking at the, you know what's available to the Marlins heading into this year, it, it still it still seems pretty healthy. And the reality is, the Marlins' pitching is you know seen kind of across Major League Baseball as, as one of the strongest staffs right now. And equally, there's there's seemingly plenty of depth knocking around as well, which they're going to need. And I think that's, you know, we always kind of get focused on the one to five, you know, who's your fifth starter? But really the question is, is who's your ninth starter? That's that's how a lot of, you know, that's the difference makers for a lot of clubs where like you start to look at who's your eighth and ninth starters when all said and done, because those guys are going to need to throw plenty of innings too. That's just, that's just the reality. That's going to be the reality. And so, you know, from a Marlins perspective, I think we probably feel relatively comfortable in who the eighth and ninth starters will be because we're talking about, we're talking about George Soriano or we're talking about Brian Hoeing or we're talking about AJ Puck. I'm really interested about AJ Puck, to be honest with you. Uh, he's on the rundown today. So we'll talk some Puck. But anyway, this episode is, is pretty much going to dig into the, the, I guess the article top topics that um, Alex Krutschek shared. So we'll do that. It starts with Sandy and with Sandy, you know, and what we've already seen with Sandy in the like the last week or so, since uh, everyone's been back is like, Sandy's been there. Yeah. You know, Sandy's been around every day. There was like great images and uh, of him watching Yuri Perez throw in like Sandy. And he's out there doing his own work. Clearly he's not going to be on the field this year. He won't be able to impact the game on the mound. But what Sandy Alcantara can bring as a Cy Young winner, as a guy who's like a leading example in terms of mentality, in terms of work ethic, clearly in terms of ability on the field. But like, these are all the traits that, you know, it's amazing to have Sandy around. And particularly for guys, like I look at it and think, we it feels like Yuri Perez is trending in the right direction. Like Sandy's really taken Yuri under his wing. But equally, 
you, you look at, and we'll talk about Eddie Cabrera later on, but I, I look at Eddie Cabrera and I think that's the guy. That's the guy that maybe needs a little bit of Sandy Alcantara, you know, off the field work ethic mentality adjustments, just small little marginal gains. So we'll talk about that anyway, but Sandy's going to be a big part of this season and a big part of the clubhouse. And, you know, it's hard to replace his innings, clearly. And, you know, Mel kind of calls that out. But, you know, I think, you know, that's... Sandy's going to have a role. He's effectively going to be another coach and, and, and a big a big coach in many ways. Um, and the other thing that Mel then calls out is, well, what's the staff going to look like and who are the options? And, you know, he, he, he called out Jesus Lozado, obviously, Braxton Garrett, Yuri Perez... Eddie Cabrera, Trevor Rogers, Max Meyer, Brian Hoeing, Ryan Weathers, George Soriano, and AJ Puck. Like, that's the point. Who's your ninth starter? Is it AJ Puck and George Soriano? That gives me a lot of confidence. I don't know about you guys, but that gives me a lot of confidence when I think about, you know, the depths of the summer. And, you know, a couple of guys have gone down. And, and, and we have to call it out. Like, Jesus Lazardo, Braxton Garrett, they put a full body of work in last year. The most likely situation is that one of one or both of them won't be able to repeat that in 24. So the history doesn't help you with the future. And actually, the history probably is more of an indicator that you're going to see, you know, not the same in 24. Like, are we going to see a full body of work with Jesus Lazaro? Like, where if you had to bet now, where would your where would your money go? My money would go is probably Jesus Lazaro misses a bit of time. Mel talked about this too. It's like everyone's spring is going to look a little bit different for Lozado, for example, and for, for Braxy. And Braxy's already um, being managed due to some you know, shoulder issues. But, you know, Lozado, for example, you know, how, how do you protect him in spring? You don't need him going full go. Clearly, you need him to be ready once, you know, opening day rolls around. And the expectation is that, that Jesus Lozado is going to be getting the ball opening day. But for spring, like, and his spring's going to look and feel differently to other guys. And, I, and and that's, you know, again, another thing that Mel Stoudemire called out. And Alex was asking him around is like, how is spring managed for these guys? I think it's a really interesting point. You know, they're going to need to get their innings in, um, you know, and that that can be done in, in a variety of ways. There's equally guys there that, that have been mentioned that, you know, they may be looking to adjust their role slightly. Soriano is definitely one of those guys. Ryan Weathers, I'm really interested to see just in terms of, you know, what what his role will be this year. AJ Puck, I think, is the most interesting. Max Meyer also is is, is another interesting. Like, there's a load of interesting storylines here with these pitchers. Um, but AJ Puck, again, another one. Like, going from effectively the Marlins closer starting the year in 23 to now a rotation option? Like, what... What happens if he doesn't crack the like is AJ Puck gonna make this rotation? Is that the plan? Like, is he gonna be into the rotation in opening, you know, opening week? Is that the plan? If it isn't, then kind of what's the point? I guess if we start to see AJ Puck being used as a starter straight away, then the expectation surely must be that AJ Puck will be in the rotation. So who's not in the rotation? Because I'm looking around and you know, there's no one has any options, really. That you, you know, you you'd be looking at Eddie Cabrera. Is he on the bubble? Maybe, maybe not. But no minor league options. Hence, maybe we're thinking about trades. Clearly, um, but I think this is a really interesting. You know, there's a, a lot of interesting storylines here in this uh, pitching staff and this rotation, and I think how they manage and ease into spring, uh, which was the topic. I think is um, you know, it was a really interesting one for sure. Making sure you know, because effectively everyone needs to be managed here. There is no Sandy. There is, you know, because that was the thing with Sandy. You'd kind of just hold it up and go, there's 200 innings there. Well, that was proven. Y you see what happens. At some point, the injury will kick in because that's just the reality of the situation. And everyone else is super young and has basically a zero track record of a full season of work. Again, the question for the Marlins is going to be, and probably for most clubs, as baseball continues to evolve, is, how good is your number eight or nine starter? And that's actually going to define what your overall numbers look like at the end of the year. How much can you rely on? And for me, I feel incredibly optimistic about 
the depth still for the Marlins from a pitching perspective, it felt like at one point a few years ago, it was like super deep, but it was super deep with a load of prospects that we didn't really know about. And, you know, all these names I've just mentioned are rattled off. Like all of them have shown ability at the big league level already, including Brian Hoeing, including George Soriano, to a lesser degree, Max Meyer. But, you know, everyone has that track record and that gives me extreme confidence where I think like other clubs, they may be looking at their rotation and thinking, okay, this looks good. But, you know, you go seven, eight, nine starters deep and what are they what are they working with? And what opportunity does that create from a Marlins perspective? So really encouraging, really, when I lay it out, when I think if, if Puck does transition to this uh, rotation spot, then boy, oh boy, that just adds another weapon for the Marlins. We'll talk about Puck in a little bit more detail shortly. Uh, but before we do that, this episode is brought to you by our good friends over at FanDuel. Yes, sir. And uh, we need some graphics for those boys. I need a producer on this show. Who's Who wants to produce this show for me? <laughs> get it rolling. Um, but guys, get your buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150. Bucks. If your bet wins, bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets. Live, same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. So just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. Fanduel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, guys, back here with me, Peter Pratt, on Monday, the 19th of Feb. It's an early one. Sun's out here in the UK. Speaking about the NBA, some talk going on this weekend about the uh, the All-Star break and, you know, the dunk contest I saw. I mean, I'm not an NBA guy at all. I've tried my best. I'd say I tried my best. I've tried. I haven't tried my best. I've tried to give it a go. Um, you know, I watched the last dance during COVID and was like, man, I should give, I should give basketball another go. Tried. No. I just can't get into it. I can't get into the game at all for whatever reason. But there's talk about this dunk contest and the all-star break. And a lot of people then going, but you know, Major League Baseball does have the best all-star break. And I think that's undoubted because. The, the, whilst the All Star Game itself is is fine, but that home run derby, <laughs> as it's correctly pronounced for our, our US friends, um, it just covers everything pretty easily. Like it's one hell of a spectacle that home run derby, no doubt. Anyway, we're back and we're talking state of the staff, um, which is inspired by Alex Krutchuk's, uh, uh recent article with Mel Stoudemire Jr. He talked about. Sandy's role, uh, and I think that's so important, just thinking about how Sandy can help these guys because he is literally like the pinup boy for everything in terms of the way he looks after his body, his mentality, his durability. Everything that Sandy does off the field uh, in preparation for is just, it's almost perfection, to be honest with you. And I think there's a lot that a lot of these young guys can take from that. And so I feel like Sandy being able to guide uh, will, will be huge moving forward. So I'm really, you know, love to see him on the mound, but clearly that isn't happening, but he still has a role to play and he's up for that challenge. He stepped up to that role. We've seen him around already. We know he's close with Yuri Perez, but, you know, we talk about it after the second ad. I, Eddie Cabrera for me is the one, um, if he's still with the organization, which we'll, we'll see. Let's talk about AJ Puck because this has been an interesting storyline or a subplot that kind of popped up early in the off season. I've talked about it a few times on this on this pod. And I, I was a little bit skeptical, to be honest with you, in terms of AJ Puck transitioning into the rotation. If we go back to when the Marlins made this trade, and reminder, that was for JJ Blade, um, they made this move. Prior to that, the view and the what was out there from the A's heading into the 2023 season was that AJ Puck was actually going to transition back into the rotation. The Marlins went and acquired him and plugged him into the closers role immediately and was super effective in that role uh, up until pretty much the all-star break got hurt a bit. And then after the all-star break, never quite rediscovered what he had, um, which is pretty disappointing. So to then hear that the AJ Puck and, and, you know, the Marlins needed to address the bullpen and try to find, you know, uh, a, a reliable closer. 
felt like they they nailed that with Puck. Clearly, they've got Tanner Scott now. Clearly, Andrew Nardi's emerged. Like, the amount of lefties is insane. So, but, you know, with Puck being hurt last year, with him having not the greatest track record as a starter, clearly, you know, you, you do have to wonder how this one plays out. And only just a few weeks ago, I was thinking, like, is Puck really going to be, you know, if the Marlins are actually, like, actively in conversations around trading, starting pitching, and at this point, we know they are because they've talked to the Orioles about Jesus Lozado. They've potentially talked to the Pirates and more about Eddie Cabrera. It feels like they've been trying to move Eddie Cabrera for like four windows now. So, you know, they, they are looking to, to move a a pitcher to, to help maybe some needs elsewhere. So that maybe drives the need for Puck to, to move into the rotation, which I, I get, but... Boy, oh boy, it feels high risk considering like what we saw from Puck, equally the injury concerns that, that we've seen with him over the years. So for a guy that struggled to stay healthy and a guy that was super effective out of the pen for a certain portion of the year, you know, it, I'm really intrigued to see the way this, this actually plays out. And again, going back to the point I made, like if they're going to try to stretch Puck out, then he, he has to start in the rotation, does he not? Like if he, and if he does, who and, and we're already hearing from Skip Schumacher, the Marlins are going with a five man. So who's going to miss out? And the only way, you know, I guess when you think about it, Lozado, Yuri, and Brax, those three are nailed on. Trevor Rogers will be nailed on if he's back and healthy and it looks fine. And then Eddie Cabrera should be nailed on because he's got no minor league options. And the Marlins haven't talked about him transitioning to a bullpen role at all. So you think, okay, well, where's AJ Puck going to fit into this? And that may come via trade. Um, or they may just move him into like a, you know, a, more of a longer relief type role and have him there in a holding pattern to step up into the rotation. Either way, it all feels like really high risk with Puck. And again, it's going to be really interesting. So in terms of what Mel Stoudemire shared, that's all just my hyperbole around this, in my opinion. And there's a lot around Puck. But the one thing he called out was the fact that Puck has been working on an, an additional pitch. So effectively last year, it was four seam and kind of slider sweeper, whatever that pitch is called. But that was the kind of, you know, two pitch mix that he was comfortable with, you know, in in, in, in high leverage spots. What we're hearing from Mel is that he's going to introduce a, uh, a two seamer into the mix now, which has always been there and they believe it to be an above average pitch. But the confidence levels weren't quite there considering it was like, I've just got to get three outs. When you're going as a starter, there's clearly going to be a need to add something to the repertoire, um, a third pitch maybe. So it looks like it's going to be that two-seamer, the four-seamer, and that that slider sweeper pitch um, that Puck's going to, going to look to do. Mel is feeling comfortable. He's feeling confident, actually, that, that this is going to be a really good pitch for Puck. And actually, like working on this pitch clearly is not a bad thing, irrespective of role. Like if he's got a an above average two seamer, four seamer, and slider, then happy days. There's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, I think this is a really interesting wrinkle. I'm again, I'm just not clear how this is going to play out with Puck. My gut feel, my gut feel is that Puck ends up back in the pen. Maybe the Marlins start this one in the rotation. Or they give him a little bit more body of work per se through spring, but my gut feel is the puck does end up back in that uh, in that bullpen to start the year. We'll see how it goes, but I think it's a really interesting situation and makes a ton of sense. Um, we're going to talk about Sixto Sanchez, of course, because it wouldn't be locked on Marlins and Mel Stoudemire um, without talking about Sixto Sanchez. Equally, Eddie Cabrera um, needs to be discussed as well. Before we do that, it's time to let you know about our good friends over at eBay Motors uh, and passion, drive and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money Back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at prices you want, 
it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only. Available to U.S. customers. All right, guys, back here with me, Peter Pratt, on Monday, the 19th of Feb, and we are talking the state of the staff with Mel Stoudemire inadvertently. Uh, we've talked Sandy. We've talked A.J. Park. It's now time to get into the more controversial topic areas of this Marlins pitching staff and Marlins Twitter. Eddie Cabrera and Sixto Sanchez. A lot of column inches, a lot of discussion on every Marlins podcast and Pirates podcast maybe right now. These two guys absolutely front and center. So I'm glad that Alex Kruchuk managed to get into these topics. Let's start with Eddie Cabrera. So with Eddie Cabrera, clearly there's a walk issue uh, the, the, and a command issue that we've, saw, we, we, we've seen directly in 2023. There's also a mentality issue, uh, the laissez-faire attitude uh, that Eddie Cabrera has. So there's a little bit of a, a, men, a mentality element there that's definitely nagging away at the Marlins, the organization, et cetera. So Mel Stoudemire believes that Cabrera's issues seem to be mental as opposed to mechanical. Uh, and he added that Cabrera needs to trust his stuff as much as everyone else does. Um, the team has continued to be patient with Cabrera and indications that he can turn it around this year. Mel started my quote to say, he looks like to this point that he's grown up a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> Stoudemire said, as he's shown some signs from the bullpen standpoint that maybe he's overcome a few things. So it's really interesting that, that Mel calls this out. We've seen it with Eddie Cabrera. Baseball savant tells you with Eddie Cabrera. The stuff is there. The talent is there. Everything is there with Edward Cabrera. But he needs to flip the script in his own head. Get it. Get dialed in. Be on the attack mode. And also just take that, I guess, step up in terms of, you know, his own development, uh, but off the field, mental development. And this is going back to what I was saying about Sandy Alcantara, the way that I know Sandy's investing a lot of time, seemingly, with Yuri Perez. But for me, Eddie Cabrera and Sandy Alcantara, that's the combination I want to see. I want to I want to see Sandy, I want to see Eddie Cabrera, to be honest with you, stepping up and, and, and getting some, you know, asking Sandy for help and guidance. And, you know, maybe Sandy having that conversation with Eddie to say, listen, this is what you need to be doing. This is what we need to see. We need to cut the BS. We need to dedicate ourselves. We need to fully immerse ourselves in becoming the pitcher that we know you can be. The laissez-faire attitude is not going to cut it. We've seen it last year. Dial in mentally and the results will come. The mechanical stuff, the talent, the stuff. Everything is already there with Eddie. We know it. That's why he's been one of the most talked about prospects in the Marlin system for many years. And we saw, we saw Sandy emerge and we looked at it and said, there's Sandy 2.0 coming. It's Eddie Cabrera. Yuri Perez should have been Sandy 3.0. And maybe he still will be. And just imagine if you have Sandy, you have Yuri and you have Eddie Cabrera, the three of them, those three dogs. Jesus Lazaro's still around for another three years. That's four dogs. Oh, my days. The Baja men would be going absolutely crazy at this right now. But Eddie Cabrera, to this point, yet to find it. Mel's calling it out. It's mental. It's mental with him. He needs to grow up a bit. And he showed signs of a little bit of growing up. It's really, it's, it's great to hear. Again, Going back to the AJ Puck situation and the overall depth situation, and maybe the Marlins looking to do something to acquire a shortstop. I don't know what the future holds here with Edward Cabrera, but you know, Mel feels like they still believe in in Eddie. It's just a mental thing for him, and if they can find a way to tap into that or see some progression, then you know, sky's the limit for Eddie Cabrera. I, I was listening to the Fish on First, uh, the unfiltered, actually, uh, episodes. Eli was calling it out with with Eddie, just saying, like, should you move Eddie right now? Because 
whilst it feels like you may be selling low, if he has a bad start, you're going to be selling even lower <laughs> with Eddie, which I, I can kind of get where Eli's coming from, to be honest with you. Um, so I, maybe that does play into it for the fish. Like if they, if, if there's that risk, that concern. And listen, when I look at the Pirates, Pirates Twitter right now, Pirates Twitter is absolutely all in on Eddie Cabrera. They can't get enough of Eddie Cabrera. It's kind of a bit like, you know, Marlon's Twitter when we're thinking about Tim Anderson. Not well. Actually, it's way higher than that. Look, like everyone is all in on Eddie Cabrera because, you know, if, if, if you remove the walks from his highlights package, then there looks to be like a Cy Young candidate pitcher where he's throwing 96 mile an hour changeups, which no one does. It's insane. It is insane, to be honest with you. And so I'm not shocked that Pirates Twitter are going bananas to go and acquire this guy. And I'm not shocked that they're pretty much happy to do a deal for any of those guys that be mentioned. I've heard no pushback. Do you know why? Why there's no pushback on any of these guys mentioned? Because Eddie Cabrera's upside is miles higher than any of the dudes they're talking about. I don't hear any pushback on any of these prospects mentioned from the Pirates. Do you know why? Because they're mid. Mid dudes. The question is, is Eddie Cabrera mid? Eli's point is, if he has a if he has a slow start in, in 24, then maybe he just is mid. Could you sell him now as like mid with a with a, a ceiling? I guess that's the, the question. Let's finish up here with uh Sixto Sanchez and a lot of eyeballs in this part of the article. By the way, what an article from Alex Crutcher. Um, one of the finest articles I've seen. This definitely this spring, if not um, ever, I don't know, but managed to get into the conversation around Sixto Sanchez. He hasn't thrown on a big league mound since 2020. So many setbacks, so many injuries, so many, so much has gone wrong for Sixto. I did see a tweet earlier on to say that Sixto Sanchez has just entered his 10th season as a prospect. Is that true? Could that be true? It might be true. <laughs> it felt like a tweet that I put out there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, six, though, it's, it's clearly been a struggle. And from Mel Stoudemire, let me, I, I think you could probably just read this out and, you know, that will probably say enough. So Mel Stoudemire, um, he says he's, you know, six, though, has thrown two bullpens so far this spring and they've been largely unremarkable. So, Mel Stoudemire is saying, if you're asking me, it's not the same six to at this point. Uh, and I say that because I know what it looked like before I had him. Um, so Mel calling it out, six to may be out there and he might be throwing a baseball, but it's not the same as before. Huge red flag. Huge red flag at that point. I think Mel Stoudemire is effectively saying that you know, the stuff just has regressed so much at this point. He also said the six, though, is feeling pain-free and that he can move along uh, on his throwing program. And the staff plans for six, though, to participate in live BP next week. So six, though, is going to be throwing live BP against live hitting, of which there's going to be plenty of hitting in there facing six, though, as I mentioned yesterday. This projected Marlins lineup, if particularly if they make a couple of free agent moves, is super deep, super deep. Maybe the deepest in the NL. I mean, Jesus Sanchez at eight? Show me your number eight hitter. He's not as good as Jesus Sanchez. Show me your number eight starter. He's not as good as Brian Hoeing, I can tell you that. The Marlins have got depth, baby. They really have. But finishing up here on six, though, he's had so many hurdles and roadblocks, uh, and he's just faltered. I almost misread that. Um, <laughs> that that word. So it's obviously a tough road for him. We need, as an organization, to definitely see something. Huge final words there. No options for six, though. So if he's healthy and pain-free and the organization isn't seeing anything and it isn't the same, then what is going to be the future here for six, though, Sanchez? He's been carried on the roster for many years. He hasn't been on the IL to give them Ross the flexibility, the 60-day IL anyway, which has always been a surprise. Um, is time ticking on Sixto Sanchez's career with the Marlins? They need to see something. And the reality is for Sixto, it's in his hands, literally. 
We're going to see what he looks like in BP. Can he get through that? We're going to see what he looks like in spring. Can he get through that? And really, at this point, is the best possible outcome for Sixto Sanchez a right-handed reliever for the Marlins out of the bullpen? And can he even be trusted in that role? Is Does the stuff even play in the bullpen? That's going to be the question as well. Thanks for making Locked On Marlins your first listen, guys. I've been Peter Pratt. This has been Monday, the 19th of Feb on Locked On Marlins. We are kicking off the week hot. We've talked about the state of the staff with some help with, from uh, Mel Stoudemire and Alex Krutchuk, Sandy Alcantara and his role, AJ Puck adding a new pitch and transitioning into the rotation. Rotation looking deep. I am optimistic around the depth of the Marlins pitching. Eddie Cabrera looks like he showed signs of growing up mentally. But do the Marlins believe in him or do they look to move him? Sixto Sanchez, he may be on the mound, but what he's throwing thus far is underwhelming. What does the future hold for Sixto Sanchez? Look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow.